All right, I'm gonna try to do as detailed a walkthrough as I can of the Slayer Max and how I rig it for fishing and fishing tournaments. All right, let's start in the front and go from there. In the front, you'll see I keep my, my net handy with the use of a uh, Yak Attack Roto grip. This is just a uh, Academy Outdoors, I think, brand of uh, net. It's extendable up to four foot, which is why I really like it. I know a lot of people are using the G2s because they float and they're putting like an extension on it. That's that's fine and good, um, but I like this one. It's a bigger loop. It's I don't know how, if you can see this, but it's a, a huge loop, which is gonna allow me to use it for saltwater use too. If I catch like a, a 30 or 40 inch drum or like a, seven eight pound flounder you're gonna need a, a much bigger net so i like this one um and also this thing is i mean it's pretty cheap i mean you can get it for like 30 bucks but i just keep it up here on the front of the kayak because it's uh the rubber netting the anti-fungal netting it kind of doesn't slip very much and i just lock it in place right here with the the roto grip easily grab it when i need it i also keep a paddle here on the other side with another roto grip which is kind of what these things are actually made for and i just keep half of it i don't keep the full paddle because i hardly ever need it it's also why i just have this generic magellan uh paddle i don't have like a really expensive paddle because well with the pedal drive i rarely rarely ever need it i keep this handy just in case i need to push off if i go into shallow water or if i snag my line and i want to go and retrieve a lure i have something to kind of paddle up there with but uh I rarely ever use this, but it's here in case I need it. And the roto grip works just like it should. So underneath there is also where I keep my catch board. I use the 32 inch catch board um, just in case I want to use it for salt water as well. Um, I have it leashed to the handle of the, uh, the Slayer Max right here at the hatch. And it doesn't quite work on land because the, uh, the drive is up, but I'll show you a little clip of how I measure them here. And then when I'm done, I just put it right back in place and it's up, it's out of the way, but it's easy to get to and uh, I don't have to ever worry about losing it or something because if you know these old school catch boards, the, the originals, they don't, they don't float, they're pretty heavy. So moving on to the Propel Drive, this is the, the newer model of the Propel Drive. I think it's the, is it the 702? So one thing I did with the, uh, the pedals is did what a lot of people are recommending online they're putting the pegs that are optional on one side as you can see i can wear you know my crocs or my water shoes that i have and they'll get a good grip and i don't have to worry about slipping but if i do want to go barefoot i can just flip the pedal over it's nice and smooth and it's uh it's not going to hurt your feet or anything like that i mean a lot of times you're using this in warm weather so you're going to want to be barefoot not a lot else to show here other than i just really love this drive it is so smooth and uh so easy to use uh i have no complaints about this thing love this thing yeah so moving on you'll see i have my uh hummingbird helix 5 this is the gen 2 with gps um this only has sonar and down imaging it doesn't have side scan i'd opted not for to go with side scan because i didn't feel like i would use it that much and uh do i regret it yeah i kind of regret it i wish i would have got side scan i know for next time when it's time to upgrade i'm definitely getting side scan it's uh it's a big deal so i have this set up on the yak attack uh lock and load system and i absolutely love it because you can pivot it any direction if the sun's hitting it or you just want to see it from a different angle. It's easily pivotable by pushing this trigger. But when you push the trigger in, it can't come out. It can't fall overboard or anything like that. You just put it back down. It's locked in place. But when you do need to get it off, there's this kind of safety trigger down in here. You probably know. You've probably seen them. But when you engage that, it just easily comes off. So that lock and load is really great because when I unhook it and it's time to go home, I can just undo the safety latch, take it off, put it in my car, 
and now I can go into the gas station or whatever I need to do. Don't have to worry about somebody stealing it. And when it's time to put it back on, just go like this, hit the switch, and it's uh, it's locked, it's engaged, fully adjustable. This thing is uh, this thing is awesome. So I use the built-in uh, Plano box holders or tackle storage management on the Slayer Max a lot. I use them on both sides, if you can't see. Um, they perfectly hold a 3600 Plano box. Um, has this little bungee so it doesn't like jostle out or anything. If you, I've actually left these going down the road. I don't think it's recommended, but I do, and it, it has no problems. So on one side, I just keep my jigs and my chatterbait and maybe some junk trailers that are messed up. And then on the other side is where I keep my terminal tackle. Just really easy to go to. These are the things I use the most, or maybe they break off, or I need to tie them on, or change them out the most, so they're here. So moving on, this is my favorite part of the Slayer Max. I absolutely love this seat. This thing is great. Um, it's such an improvement over past seats that I've had on other kayaks. I just can't even begin. I mean, you can just see how organized it is. I have my fish grips here. I have my pliers and my scissors. This is for cutting like braid and I use them just for a lot of stuff, retying rigs, all bungeed on. So if I do drop them, they don't go overboard. Um, absolutely love that. I also love the fact that the seat can hold, I don't have that many under here. But technically, the seat could probably hold, I would guess, six 3,600 Plano boxes if you were to put them on there. I just keep a worm binder. This is where I keep a lot of my random plastics at. And uh, I keep that under there. I usually keep a fish scale. It's not under there right now. This is just for the video. And then a couple other 3,600 Plano boxes. Then behind the seat is really great because I can keep a, I think this is a 3,700. The 37 or 38 i think 3700 plano box and it fits right there i think it's specifically made for this i'm not 100 sure but it fits perfectly there this is where i keep my crankbait and top water at um, just something i can reach behind the seat and easily grab no big deal and then i also keep this oversized i'm not sure what this is i think it's a flambo yeah flambo but um i don't know what size it is i'm sorry i just Something I had laying around in a closet, but it fits perfectly between the seat and the sidekick uh, rail system that's here. And uh, I keep random stuff in there. There's some some drop shot tackle leader, as you can see. Um, I don't even know what's all in here, man. It's uh, just a bunch of junk. If I tie tie uh, a new bait on, I'll throw an old one in here, and then I'll clean it out later. I just have some random stuff in there just to keep from trash flying around. So moving on is the GoPro mount. It's also on the lock and load system. Now, if you're familiar with the channel and you're subscribed and you've been viewing it for a while, you probably know I have a DIY video that I'll kind of like link up here somewhere, but um, it's how to make a budget GoPro mount or a DIY one based off of basically a monopod. It's a great option for, um, a cheap solution or a budget minus solution but i wanted something a little more premium something that i could really fully fully adjust and i didn't have to worry about you know was i at the right angle or whatever and so i went with the yak attack boomstick pro this is their newer model it's a lot lighter weight than the old one it floats and uh i'm gonna do a walkthrough of how i set up my gopro with all day power but uh spoiler alert it's on a battery pack and uh, I think it's still pretty budget-minded considering, and I'll, I'll put a video of that up later. But for now, just know I, I keep it on the, uh, the Yak Attack lock and load. It's fully articulative, um, and I can just change the angle and stuff like that. Just reach right here beside my seat, no big deal. So moving on, if there's one thing I recommend that a kayaker get besides a PFD, it's a good way to transport your investment of your kayak. And this thing right here is awesome. I used to mess around with the kayak carts and have to take them off and put my kayak on them and try to balance it and then strap them on and carry them down to the water and then unstrap them and then carry my kayak cart all the way back to the car in the parking lot and then walk all the way back and get the, the, uh, the kayak ready again. And with the...
um, sidekicks here, it's so much less effort. I know a lot of people have probably seen them and they're like, it can't be that much better. It really is. The same goes for the Boondocks landing gear. They're, they're both very, very similar. It's just pretty much preference. But um, they're such a lifesaver, man. You fold them down, you haul your kayak down to the water, you fold them back up and you're in the water. There's no traveling back and forth. There's no trying to balance it or put straps around it and stuff. You don't have to find the right kayak cart that fits your kayak. Just buy these. It's a little bit more, but it's worth it. I mean, this is the number one investment I would do if I bought a new kayak now that I have them. These things are awesome. I will say a lot of people are changing the wheels out. This is the native brand, their Sidekick, I think is what they're called. And uh, they, some people are changing the wheels out to the Railblazer wheels because these are buoyant. They're filled with air. And when you go to fold them down, it's a little bit hard to get them to go vertically down when you're bringing your kayak back in from the, from the ramp. And so you have to fiddle with it for a little while. And getting the ones that aren't buoyant makes it a lot easier. So I'll probably be doing that in the future. I'll let you know how it goes. So for my rod storage, I usually take four to five rods. So this is a Gatlin fishing rod holder. I got it at a 45 degree angle, but they also offer a horizontal storage. I'll put a video demonstration of how it works on the water right here. So hopefully that video gives you an idea of how it works. It's kind of hard to demonstrate out here in a parking lot, but uh, it basically rotates around. I can easily access my rods. I rotate it back to the back. It's out of the way. All the rods are held. If I do take a fifth rod, I usually stick it over here in the, uh, the flush mount rod holder um, where it's kind of out of my way. And I also keep a rod up here next to the seat in the opposite angle flush mount rod holder. I love this thing. Um, I don't know if I'll get another one. I might, um, if I do, it'll probably be another 45 degree angle because I really like the, the way it's up and out of the way. And I don't have to worry about clearance because of the next thing I'm gonna show you. So I already have a eight foot uh, fiberglass rod. This is for an anchor system here that I have. This is from Yak Gadget. I think Yak Gadget calls this the Quick Stop Manual Power Pole or the Quick Stop Power Pole. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I'm sorry. But um, this thing is awesome. I love this. This may be my other second <laughs> favorite. I know I'm going to recommend everything, but this, is, this might be my other second favorite uh, recommendation. This thing is awesome. If you're fishing in wind, this thing holds up to at least 10 miles per hour. I've tested it. Probably more than that, really. But... Um, I'll show you how it works here. So it works from this string and they don't, they don't sell this part with it, but I have it attached to the anchor wizard. You're all probably pretty familiar with this. If you're familiar with kayaking and kayak fishing, these things are ingenious. Um, it's just a lever system that you rotate backwards and it releases. You wind it back in and it locks. It's actually ingenious just how simple it is really. But um, when I release this backwards, so turning it backwards, the pole falls, reeling it in, the pole pulls back up. I'll post another example of it. So the way that I have it set up, the anchor wizard rope just runs up here. I have this little eye um, bolt here. It kind of just guides it to make sure it goes to the right place. And then the Yak Gadget mount actually comes with everything you're seeing here, all the hardware. Um, it has this has this sort of guide, almost pulley system. And then when you release the, uh, the Anchor Wizard, it falls like that. And then when you reel the Anchor Wizard back up, it just slowly pulls back up and out of the way and out of the water. This other eye bolt doesn't have anything to do with this. This is actually how I transport my kayak on the trailer. I, I cross some straps over and they kind of grab onto these things and just kind of hold the kayak downward on the trailer. That's really nothing to do with the fishing part of it. The kayak does have other options for storage. So you could put a 3600 here 
and kind of rest it vertically. But then the problem is you can't really turn all the way to the right. So I hardly ever use that option. All right, so I promised I'll show you how I rigged the battery for the fish finder and I'll do that now. Unfortunately, one of the, uh, the uh, flaws in the way I set mine up is I can't easily get in the hatch when I'm on the water because the, uh, the net is here, the catch board, all that stuff. But honestly, I've never had to get into here because I always get everything I need and rig it on the kayak, which is why I really love the kayak because all of the different rigging options that are on here, the rail mounts, the storage under the seat. So obviously I keep a few things in here, you know, scales to weigh the fish, some other like panfish fishing stuff, some dry socks and stuff, no big deal. Um, but for the battery, I cut a circular hole through the inside of the battery compartment here. It just has a waterproof kind of seal around it. And I ran my transducer under here, which is where it's made for. It actually has, the kayak has a built-in uh, transducer mount. So that kind of mounts up under the kayak, up under there. And uh, then it kind of has like a little flush mount uh, seal around it. So that wire comes up here. For the battery, it's no big deal. It's just two simple wires. You can probably figure out how to wire it yourself. Now, I will say you should have an inline fuse, which I don't use, but I've never needed it for something like this because uh, those are really to protect other, like way more expensive electronics, more for boats and stuff where you have more of a risk of fire and stuff like that. So I've never really needed it, but anyways, I keep my battery in here like this. It has all this padding. This comes with the kayak, if you're not familiar. I have this just foam block that came with some shipping stuff and it kind of fits perfectly around the battery itself in the compartment. And it just kind of fits around that and it keeps it from sliding around and uh, moving. This is just a cheapo Duracell, but this powers that unit for I don't even know how long I've had it on the water for over 10 hours and could probably go back out for another at least half day, if not full day. And I haven't had any issues with it. And for the unit itself, I just used a sacrificial plate. This is like the electronic panel for the kayak that comes with it. Drill the hole. Same, another flush mount kind of uh, water seal here that kind of just clamps around the wire and it keeps uh, water from getting down into the hole of the kayak. Eventually, I'm gonna put some lights on the kayak. I want a, a morning light or an evening light for when I'm coming off the water. And I also want some internal lights to if I ever wanna go night fishing, I can see how to tie stuff. So I'll have a couple of switches here and I may end up putting a USB port here, but I haven't done it yet. All right, so don't forget we have the KBF State Challenge Series coming up in the next few videos. That's a month long challenge series from kayak bass fishing. I'm actually gonna go out and do some fishing right now. But if you like this video, hit the like button. If you really like the video and you think you might like the channel, you like bass fishing, you like kayak fishing, think about hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out and I'll see you in the next video.